Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 148, The One Without Brett, recorded on Friday, May 28th, 2021. From Zanata Consulting, I'm Tyler Colts, and this week I am joined with a special guest here, John Mark Bantock from Catalyst Connect. Hey, John Mark, thanks for being here. Hey, Ty, pleasure to be here. Sorry I'm not Brett, but I'll do my best. <laughs> So for our listeners here, Brett is actually out of town this week, fully disconnected on his honeymoon. He got married last week. So we've got uh, John Mark filling in for the show. So with that, let's jump right on into our announcements. Um, So a couple upcoming webinars here. We'll be doing ours on Zoho Inventory on Tuesday, June 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, In that, it'll kind of just be covering an overview and best practices, some of the general use cases for Zoho inventory. Just go ahead and take a look at that if you're interested. As always, over on crmzen.com, you can find our full list of all Zoho events, whether they are done by us or done by Zoho. Um, You know, this week, we're kind of highlighting two of them here, one around Zobots and how they can benefit your business, and then another kind of as a overall walkthrough of the new sales IQ. A um, lot of new tools under the hood there, so I would advise checking those out if you're using Sales IQ or thinking about using it in the future. Yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to those webinars. I think that uh, there's some fantastic topics to dive into. Yeah, a whole lot there with the new uh, new Sales IQ. You've actually got another article about that uh, this week. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the news. So the first story here is a little rebranding news from Zoho Marketing Hub. So they're actually going to go ahead and rename that product to Zoho Marketing Automation. Um, This is kind of in their larger process here for rebuilding kind of where Marketing Hub and what is now Marketing Automation will fit into their product suite. Uh, So we've talked about it a little bit before, but, you know, basically the page send, sales IQ, Zoho campaigns, they're all kind of going to get rolled into this umbrella product that will be serving really that whole end-to-end marketing experience on your site, as well as via some email automations. This is just a little announcement. One thing to be aware of is that I believe if you do have this on WordPress, they're asking that you go ahead and update that plugin as soon as you can, because I think a couple things around the routing uh, URLs are gonna change. And moving on to our next story here, just a minor little update around Zoho Assist. So Zoho Assist now has a little integration with Slack. Um, So basically what you're going to be able to do is, you know, ask for that request for remote control to a PC, Mac, or mobile device just directly through Slack. So kind of a slick one there if you are still using Slack internally. I think a lot of people end up moving over to Click, but sometimes those communication tools are just hard to uh, to migrate off of. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, uh, Slack is a pretty mainstay app in a lot of uh, larger organizations. So this will definitely help those IT teams in uh, jumping into supporting their folks. And they've been running a, a couple updates to assist recently. They did the dual monitor support not too long ago. Um, I know Which it's, uh, is kind of imperative these days, isn't it? <laughs> I know. I, uh, I don't know what I would do with just one monitor. It's uh, We're very spoiled nowadays with cheap LCDs, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. If uh, you guys didn't uh, see the news, there's a 70-inch uh, 4K uh, TV on sale through Walmart this weekend. So anyone want an extra large monitor? Uh, there you go. <laughs> That's a way to do it. Get it posted up on your wall up there so you can look at it while you're working. Yeah, yeah. You can see my, you know, the Black Friday specials uh, behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And then our next story here, kind of in the ongoing slew of news from Sales IQ. Um, So, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before, but this is their official post on it. So they have rolled out the codeless bot builder in Sales IQ. Um, It's important to differentiate between the answer bot and the Zobot. Um, So we talked about the answer bot over the past couple of weeks. That's kind of like a QA that's going to automatically try to tie you into a article that you have in Sales IQ. Um, This codeless bot builder is related to the Zobot, which is a little bit more goal oriented. So you're kind of trying to proactively reach out to someone on the site and guide them to connect to someone on the sales team or someone on your customer service team. Um, We talked about this a little bit before the show. This is probably one of the things I'm most excited about with Sales IQ and the new updates, just because that old Zobot was 
real difficult to work with um, unless you were a very advanced deluge programmer. Yeah, I, I too am very excited about this. It's uh, I think going to open uh, this feature app for so many more folks to jump into and uh, give a shot. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, in many cases, we steered away from the old uh, Zobot because it was just too complicated. And if uh, tweaks or changes needed to be made, uh, it had to go back to the original dev that uh, programmed it. And I think mm -hmm. this is really going to open it up to many more users to explore, which is mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, because even if you knew, you know, you knew your way around Deluge, this was a whole different world to try to build one of these. So it just became prohibitive, where I think a lot of people just wouldn't really touch it. Um, so this is this is a great update there for Sales IQ. Then moving on here, a couple more little stories here. One from Zoho Projects. Um, so, you know, this is kind of related to their tie into the Microsoft suite. Um, you know, looking at Teams and Outlook. Um, so really what we're looking at here is Zoho Projects is going to be writing over to your new adaptive cards. I will say we don't use too many of the Microsoft products in-house, um, but in essence, it's just going to tie, you know, basically your project's task to an action item over in the Microsoft suite just a little bit tighter. Um, so if you are using these adaptive cards as well as projects, you want to take a look at this one. Yeah, you know, Tyler, this is actually something that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, we use Zoho uh, projects for a lot of our product development. And uh, oftentimes we'll be in a team meeting or in a chat and, you know, a new task will pop up. And it is somewhat disruptive to one's flow to jump back into the project later on or take notes to then go add the right tasks. And I think from a workflow standpoint, it's really going to increase the usability of projects to be able to, you know, add and update uh, tasks right within uh, your your workflows of communicating with your team. So I think that if you're a Microsoft shop and use projects, this is going to be a big one for you. And we talked about this a little actually a couple of weeks ago with um, LSP that, you know, context matters so much and being mm -hmm. able to communicate about things while you're looking right at them where everything's kind of in one suite really just does make sure that things don't get lost in translation. Yeah, absolutely. And then kind of our next story here around Zoho meetings, they did a little batch of updates here for that in their weekly post. So a couple updates here. So for Zoho webinar, which is kind of the sub product within meetings, um, they've actually now expanded that up to a limit of attendees of a thousand. Um, it does look at look like they're kind of separate editions. So you might have a little extra charge if you need to uh, turn that on. You can basically roll it up to supporting 500 people or supporting 1,000 just based on your particular needs. A couple other updates here. Stereo audio support now for meeting as well as webinars. Um, they've revamped their scheduling system. Uh, a big one here that I've noticed with some Zoho meetings is they've improved some audio quality. I'm interested to test that out. It's always been one little thing with meetings that no matter what mic you're using, it always just comes through just a little bit compressed. Um, so I think that that'll be a nice little update there. Looks like it's particularly about smoothing things out if you have some connection issues. Uh, and then last little update here for the product is customizing your email invites. Um, so now you're able to kind of build a little template out of that rather than just having to use the standard templates. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think that uh, the, the meetings team has done a great job over the last couple of years in really maturing that product. I think that we're getting really close for it to be competing head to head with uh, some of the mainstays. So really exciting to to see these uh, uh, continual enhancements here. Yeah, and it really, I think for us, the last little things, and we talk about all the time is just the flow for booking meetings. So currently we're using Calendly and Zoom. Mm -hmm. Bookings and Zoho meetings can do that, but with the, some issues that we see with bookings kind of lingering there, it's hard to make that switch. But they, like you're mentioning, are just like right on the cusp of being you know, a fully competitive product with, you know, the Zooms and the other uh, mainstays. Yeah. I think that my, my next wish list will be, you know, really good recording and audio transcripts. And I think that we will get pretty close. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing that Zoom does do well. I mean, when you record a Zoom meeting, you get so many different files, you know, you get a video recording of just the screen share, just the presenters, discrete audio for all the presenters. And so, yeah. you know, when we record our podcast, we just hand that over to our, um, you know, editing team, and they've got everything they need to smooth out all of our numerous errors that we make as we do this live. Yeah, what errors? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. You know, so um, 
<laughs> so, so speaking of errors, um, and we, we can touch on this in the, the app of the week, because I know that you have uh, uh, a quick tip, but uh, I came across a really interesting app called Descript. And it actually, uh, you can upload your audio files. It uh, does the uh, transcription. And then uh, you can actually edit the text and take out your ums, your ahs. If you misspeak, you can actually type in the word and it will insert that word in your own voice into wow. the video. Kind of so creepy. how cool is that? You know, <laughs> uh, that uh, what one takes are going to be the future here. That's uh, right on the cusp of cool and creepy. You could kind of do anything you want with that, right? You can make me say uh, say things that I don't want to say. I, th- I think we've all seen like the Tom Cruise deep fakes, right? Mm-hmm. And it's now coming uh, to, to all of us. So. Oh, it'll be interesting times here as that tech gets better and better. Sure does. And with that here, a couple more little news stories. So as always, so inventory rolling out their kind of May roll up. Most of these are topics that we probably touched on, probably kind of glanced off of throughout the month. Um, but a couple things here have a little spotlight for you about some additional tools within Zoho Inventory that you can use. Um, you know, they've looked, they've included a recording to one of their expert talks that they did, kind of walking through inventory management using Zoho Inventory. And then they've got a couple links here for the tail end of the month to check out a couple of their upcoming webinars. Of course, down at the bottom here, a couple little product updates that rolled out throughout this month, but I think we did cover them. Um, you know, a couple updates around Shopify, calculating taxes, and um, you know, updating a little bit about how the orders are syncing through that integration. So nothing too crazy, but if you are an inventory user, you want to take a look at a couple of these spotlighted items. Yeah, I think that this is another app that uh, we're seeing some good incremental progress on. I think that. The next uh, step is just some more streamlined processes with less clicks to get through uh, in order of fulfillment, um, but it, it really is uh, maturing yeah. nicely. Yeah, and, and I will highlight here in their upcoming webinar that they're doing um, on the 27th here, there's a link to register in this note. They actually have looped in um, someone from the EasyShip team uh, called Hiromi Ochi. I've actually talked to her before around EasyShip. As you're talking about fulfillment and speeding that up, that is a very cool little tool with an excellent integration to Zoho Inventory. Um, awesome. So if you, anyone who is kind of in that point where they're getting a little frustrated with the clicks just to get you know, your label printed and get things packaged, um, you want to check out that webinar because they might have the perfect solution for you there. Great. A couple more little updates here. So here's a big one, actually, not a little update. This is from CRM. Um, a long awaited update here. So you are now able to trigger automations or other process management pieces when you're importing records. Um, so gone are the days of setting up a checkbox that you check on all the records once you update them to run your functions. You can now just go ahead and say, hey, I'm importing these leads. I'm gonna check this box. And now all of the lead creation workflows are gonna fire off. Um, so it's. Yeah. I, I cannot to... tell you that this is a big one for, for us. I think yeah. that uh, I can't tell you how many times we've worked on those little workarounds to mass update new imports and uh, just how cumbersome that can be to make sure that you've got everyone. And uh, yeah. uh, there, there's so many use cases where you just have to import uh, records. You, you're going to be getting a, a bought list or a, an industry trade show list and you're going to have to bring it in. And this is really going to help with that automation to get it to the right department and the right folks and the right just linking of data within the system. Yeah, a big one that we had was, um, you know, people were importing invoices. They had a third party accounting platform. And yep. when those invoices would go in, you know, there would need to be notifications to the sales rep. We'd run a function to sum the invoices into their accounts. So you'd always have that like running total. Yeah. And so it was just you import them, you're checking the box, you're running the function, you're checking the box, you're running the function. So I think this will save people a lot of time. Uh, I do want to highlight that the limit here for running them is on a file of 10,000 rows. Um, so if you have a really big file, you might need to split it up a couple times um, to have it run through properly. And I do want to highlight one little note. We noticed the day that they turned this on earlier this week. I don't know if you noticed this as well, John Mark. Seems like workflows are running a little bit slow. We had a couple clients report to us that weren't using this, but just that had yeah. a lot of workflows running that it seemed like things were taking 15, 20 minutes. So they are rolling these out in phases because I would imagine it's going to be 
spikes in server load as people are running these yeah. operations. I, I think that that is something that we've certainly brought up with Zoho and we've noticed across many of our clients that have a lot of automation and even in our own systems, we've done a lot of testing. And what we found is that a good 95% of workflows trigger almost instantaneously. And when I say almost, I'd say within a second or two. We find that there are probably another 3% uh, of workflows that will trigger within two to three minutes. And then there's a, you know, a, a fraction, maybe it's 1% of workflows that trigger after three minutes. And it's something to be aware of because if you have a critical chain of events that require certain things to be processed before the next action happens, be aware that some of those uh, infringed cases may not trigger immediately, especially in bulk like this. Yeah, and one little note as well, I, I don't know where this lives in Zoho's documentation, but we found it out, I think, on accident a little while back, but I haven't mentioned it in a while. When you're looking at your workflows, if you have things that need to run in a particular order, workflows actually run top to bottom mm -hmm. on the workflow page. So if you reorder them into the proper order, they should go off in that order every time. So if you do have some of those where you might be, you know, action two relies on action one, you want to make sure that those are in the proper order so that they go off uh, without a hitch. Yeah, that, that's a great reminder. And uh, one other uh, nugget here to, to keep in mind is that if you are doing API integrations to the Zoho ecosystem and you're using multiple Zoho apps, make sure that you post those new records into the finance suite first because that has an immediate sync to the CRM, whereas records inserted into the CRM can take up to two hours to sync to the finance suite. So if you have very quick transactions, like an e-commerce transaction, and you uh, need to uh, have automation or, or actions spread across multiple Zoho apps, make sure you start the workflow from the finance side so that you don't have any uh, uh, problems through that uh, workflow. Just the little uh, intricacies of Zoho's backend, right, that we learn over time, oftentimes yep. through uh, trial and error. <laughs> And one last little bit of news here for this week. Uh, this is kind of just a summary article here and a little walkthrough for the new Zoho Calendar UI. Um, you know, so far we're hearing a lot of great things about it. We have not moved over yet. Again, we are just so, we live and die on our calendar and, and by, you know, the Calendly integration to it. Um, we'll be looking at calendar more and more over time. I know that this is just step one on Zoho's longer term plan to really make calendar tie in all your various applications. Um, but so far, yeah, the, the UI is, is super nice to look at, um, especially based on if you compare it to the previous UI, which was you know late 90s type of theme. Mm -hmm. um, definitely making big strides there and we're, we're excited to keep, um, keep uh, an eye on this as it continues to improve. Yeah, and I think that there's some really cool um, integrations that you can do with Calendar. Um, uh, something that uh, we do to help automate our video uploads is we've actually, we use G Suite for a lot of our email and, and file mm -hmm. sharing, and of course, the, the Google Calendar. And through the sync with uh, uh, Zoho's calendar, we actually run an automation uh, every three hours on a scheduler that picks up the Zoom conference link from the calendar URL and the meeting location, finds that meeting recording in Zoom, and then automatically adds it to a client folder uh, in our Google Drive, which shows up in the, the client's portal. And nice. um, uh, that has saved us a tremendous amount of time and just making sure that we're getting videos uploaded to our clients. So it's definitely about some of those uh, workflow enhancements as we're all working abroad and uh, uh, remotely and um, need to have better uh, syncs at the end of the day. Yep. I might ask you for that code snippet because that's, uh, I would like that myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, alrighty, and I think that wraps it up for the news. So next we can go ahead and jump into our implementation of the week. Um, this is one that we did for email validation using Zoho Deluge, just making a quick little API call out to a service called clearout.io. Um, now, you know, within the CRM, there are a variety of email checking and validation plugins. Um, oftentimes, what I've found with those plugins is that they do the job if you do have any bugs though, support is not always great and you're not able to choose the rules at which those plugins run. So if you wanted to have this done on a scheduled basis, maybe every six months you wanna rerun it on a contact, right? You're not really able to do that. They're just gonna plug in the workflows that come with that plugin and that's what you're gonna get. 
So if you have kind of a basic use case, one of those might work for you. Um, but in some cases, it just needs to be a little bit more custom. So what we went ahead and did is we built out a little integration just using Zoho Deluge. It's running in the CRM and it's just making a quick little API call out to clearout.io. Um, I will say their API is very easy to work with. Um, you basically sign up for an account, you grab a little client key, you know, and you bring that over and that's all you really need to do for authentication. And then you're basically just pinging over a little post with an email address and it's going to return if it's valid, if it's invalid, or if it's a catch-all inbox. Um, this is really important to do, especially if you're doing a lot of outbound email marketing. Uh, you want to make sure your domain stays in good standing. And so mailing out to any addresses that are going to bounce uh, does not help you with that. Yeah, I, I'd say that if you're sending out more than a thousand, uh, you know, automated emails a month, this is a, a mainstay. You really yeah. got to make sure that your data is clean um, because uh, you don't want to get into the situation where your domain gets blacklisted or starts getting flagged as spam. Um, yep. So uh, uh, certainly uh, check this one out. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more about clearout.io. It's actually going to be our app of the week, little spoiler alert there, but um yeah, so again, kind of just the use case here is just if you do need that custom workflow that the plugin doesn't quite handle, uh, the service provides a quick and easy way to build that out just using a little bit of code. All righty, and that moves us on to this week's reads. Here again, we are pulling from HubSpot as we like do every couple of weeks. They just put out a ton of useful content here. Um, so this one is about how to get to know your email subscribers. Um, they kind of go through a variety of different tips and tricks here that kind of get you through a couple ways to learn about, let me turn off my dark mode here, a couple ways to learn more about the people that are subscribed to your email, just so that you're able to continually customize things as you go. Um, you know, a couple interesting things, you know, as with COVID nowadays, digital marketing has become so, so much more prevalent. Um, and so being able to differentiate yourself and do a really good job at that has become more important than ever. Um, so we like this article kind of gave a couple little actionable things that you can do to improve how you're reaching out to people and how you're customizing things. Um, you know, I like, like the idea of just sending a poll, just ask, right. They kind of drop that in here that, you know, oftentimes we try to be so clever and figure out all these different personas, but oftentimes if you just ask someone what they're interested in, you know, they might tell you. Yeah. I think that uh, what I'd like to stress here is the importance of starting to do this early. You know, your, your list may be small now, but um, you know, it takes time to figure this out, and uh, it, it's good to start early and lay the foundation so that as your list grows and matures, uh, it really compounds. And uh, you know, you're going to lay the foundation here for something that's really going to help you at scale. Absolutely. Just a quick read over there. So if you are interested in doing some email marketing, make sure to check that one out. That takes us over to what's new on Zanata.com. So again, we've put out another little guide here around Zoho Sign. So a couple little tips here just that you might want to get set up as you're building out Zoho Sign. Anything from, you know, setting up multi-factor authentication, um, you know, running through all of your data processing just using Zoho Sign. Uh, the full document backup that they've rolled out, we're able to just post these out to any of your folders. Um, and then of course, kind of matching your access and identity management using Zoho Sign. So quick little read there. Uh, we also did put up a new case study here for one of our clients. Um, this kind of, kind of started with a buzz saw. Um, you know, we kind of pulled a lot of things out of the system that weren't really being used and put it back together in a way that makes a little more sense for the client. Um, so case study there for anyone who wants to check that out. And then lastly here for our new on Zanata, they've done it again. Uh, Wayne has been able to find another PDF here. We keep thinking that it's gonna be uh, the last time that he's able to find one, but here we are with, with another. So this is kind of a guide of your reporting within Zoho campaigns. Um, I think this is worth taking a look at. The way that they do reports can be a little confusing at first because they break things out into you know, activity reporting, campaign reporting, list reporting, um, so this kind of breaks down what each of those is going to mean and how to read through those reports and understand kind of what they're telling you. Awesome. That's a good find. And moving on here to our application of the week. This is one that I bet we've done a little while ago, but I thought I would throw it back into the loop here with our implementation. Uh, so this is a service called clearout.io. 
Um, they do basically one thing and one thing only. They, you give them an email address and they let you know if it's deliverable. Um, you can do this on their platform using a spreadsheet, right? So I can import things and just have it run through. Or they have a really easy to work with API that you can build into you know, a Zoho function or function really anywhere that you're running it. Um, you know, so we've used this service for a while now, um, you know, in a, in a bunch of different use cases. One of the nice reasons that we like it is that they don't force you to have any kind of subscription. A lot of these services are going to say, hey, you know, you need to have a $50 a month subscription. That's going to come with X number of credits, and then you need to buy more credits. Um, they allow you to just buy credits when you need them, if you'd rather do it that way. And their pricing is really competitive based on a lot of their competitors. Um, so basically the highest price you can pay if you're buying the minimum amount of credits is seven tenths of one cent. Uh, a lot of their competitors are going to be in the like one to two cent range. So as you're doing this in bulk, uh, that savings does add up over time, especially if you look at it as a percentage. One last little thing to note about them that I'm excited to see, I kind of stumbled on this on their website, is that they're actually building a direct integration for Zoho CRM. It's kind of on their roadmap, not yet released. Um, so keep an eye out on that. I'm sure that when they roll that out, we'll mention it in the show because um, it's a tool that we just love using uh, for our clients. Yeah, and, and something to uh, keep in mind here is if you are an e-commerce firm, uh, perhaps use that API upon checkout to validate the email address as part of a checkout process. And that way- you Yeah, and they, they actually have now, um, I didn't dig too much into it, but they have a little JavaScript widget that can do that on your site. Awesome. Um, that apparently just plugs in and takes care of it for you. Again, I didn't dig too much into it, but it's kind of a new thing they're announcing here. So if you are in that case, like John Mark's mentioning there, where you need validation on the form on your website, you'll definitely want to take a look at that. Because if you could just install a little widget and it does it for you, that's kind of the best case scenario. Yeah. All righty. And that brings us to our tip of the week. So this is our third little video here on Zoho WorkDrive. Um, you know, this kind of walks through all of the basic things around setting up profiles, the branding, content, roles and permissions, custom sharing rules, as well as our custom domain and data retentions. This kind of runs through just the back end settings, right, that are under that admin panel and everything that you might want to tweak or customize within WorkDrive. Now, John Mark, have you guys started making the move over to WorkDrive yet? We kind of pulled the trigger on it about a month ago, and we've been really happy so far. Yeah, I actually really like WorkDrive. Uh, we do a lot of these implementations for clients, especially with the nice uh, extension in the CRM to add the related mm -hmm. list to the records. And so what we do is I'll, um, come up with a, a template folder uh, structure for each client, and then we automatically populate that folder structure in the yeah. root folder for their account record, for example. Unfortunately, we have so much automation tied through to our Google Drive um, mm. that displays in our portal that uh, we, we're going to probably keep that for the foreseeable future. Okay. But um, we love working with WorkDrive and it really has come a, a far way. So definitely check it out um, because it's, uh, I think it has pretty much everything that we need. For the, there haven't been too many use cases that it hasn't been able to achieve a mm -hmm. client's use case. All they need to do is uh, take that API doc and actually make a page out of it. I don't know if you've bumped into that, but it's still just sitting on that <laughs> writer document that you have yeah. to find in the forums. Uh, uh, we, we love we your API, though. Forums. Mail copies from uh, various uh, work drive uh, yep. uh, support folks at Zoho. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good tool. And again, just kind of a quick little walkthrough of those back end settings if you want to take a look at that. All righty, and that is going to be a wrap for our show this week. Thanks again for joining me here, John Mark. I would have been real lonely if I had to do this myself. So again, I really do appreciate you being here with me. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Absolutely. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send them over to us at info at zanata.com or info at crmzen.com. On our website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. You can always follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday. Thanks, guys. Cheers.